Hello everybody, welcome to Hot Tips. My name is Charlie and this is Computer Tycoon. This is a brand new, brand spanking new indie game that is in really early alpha by a one-man developer. The company's name is Pregorian. At least I think I'm saying that right. Computer Tycoon is a game all about the business end of creating computers and the tech boom and revolution that happened throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to 2034. <laughs> uh, at least that's where they go with this. Uh, you can see the kind of Steve Jobs looking guy here on the intro screen. It is actually created as sort of a, a tribute to Steve Jobs as his the sixth year, I guess, anniversary of his death, if you will, uh, was October 5th. So. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to take a look at the settings really quickly. Keep in mind, this is very early alpha. There are going to be bugs. There are going to be little tweaks in the interface. And everything you see is subject to change. But uh, it's out today, and I'm going to show it to you. So, uh, pretty simple stuff. I'm going to leave the tutorial tips on. There's not a whole lot to the settings right now. You choose your resolution and your graphic settings before you launch the game. So, I, I already chose 1080p and all that stuff. Uh, so, let's get started. Yeah, yeah. New game. I am gonna choose my name, obviously. Uh, I'm just gonna say Charlie for now. And company, totally gonna be hot tips. You know it's coming. Probably gonna spell it right. Add a little exclamation point, call it good. Now, you get to start with one of three bonuses. You can choose to either have 10% added to your research speed, 10% added to your production, or 10% added to logistics. And we'll go over what each of those three things are in a second. But for me, I'm gonna take research because I wanna sp I wanna split to research, or I wanna blitz to research uh, certain types of researches for mine. You can choose a color, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it the blue, it's fine. Then you can choose your difficulty. You get beginner, normal, hard. Well, I'm totally beginner. This is pretty much a blind play. I I got about an hour into it just to kind of check it out and see things. So uh, I'm gonna go for the beginner for now because it will let me show you things. Now. It looks to be like there's a random events thing here, but I can't click it. So I'm going to assume, this is again, very early alpha. I'm going to assume I can't actually click things like this. Um, and then random world also is like permanently turned on. So I can't turn it off. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. Then you get to choose your opponents. And so these are competitive companies, right? These are competing companies, if you will. And they kind of have faces after known CEOs and stuff over the years. It's kind of interesting. The There's little names like IBN. <laughs> Bigs computers, right? Cheap and great. <laughs> so we can, uh, you know, Afari solutions, right? Uh, you can choose your own avatar if you want to by going to select and then just use the mouse wheel to kind of flip through different options. And for you ladies out there wondering, yes, there is a female CEO if you want it. So there it is. Uh, but there's only one because throughout, throughout history, let's face it, all of the tech CEOs all the way throughout history, they've all been men. That's just the way it is. It's not sexist. It's just simply the way it is in history. Um, however, right here, you can be one a woman if you want to be. So there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with the Steve Jobs thing because I'm personally a fan. Uh, whether you are or not doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm gonna go for 10% research. Let's go. Okay, this game is super deep and it has so much potential to be really really cool. And uh, it, it gets into. There are parts of the game where it's not that deep yet, but there are parts of the game where it's much deeper than anything else I've played in this particular type of game. Uh, so it says, hi mate, this is a random mode. This is a message from the developer, right? Uh, random mode where all the current post-Soviet, uh, post-Yugoslav, Czechoslovak, etc. Czechoslovak, I, I can say it right. Uh, countries exist in the 70s, so all of you can enjoy your own countries in this mode. And every country has algorithmically generated population and economic data, which increases replayability. So every time you boot the game up and play a different playthrough, uh, the statistics on each of these countries are going to be slightly different. And their needs and wants and what the population is demanding also is going to be slightly different. Um, so it also gives a little bit of like tips and stuff on how you should probably play the game. You can read that if you want to. I'm going to just jump into it. So first thing you want to do is take a look here at the top. We have 15 million computer tycoon dollars. This is our budget. This is what we can afford. Okay. Then we have PP. This is production power. This tells us how many things we can produce in a day. And the more production power we have, of course, the more we can produce in a day. And everything we produce in the game has a certain PP requirement, production power requirement. So the higher the production power requirement, the less of that you can build in a day. Um, it's just the way it is. 
Um, then you have RP. This is research power. Again, it kind of goes along with production power in that this is the speed at which you can research things. Certain researches take more than others, so it might take you longer depending on how much research power you have. Then there's logistics points. This is a big one for this game because you notice if I hover over top of these countries, uh, it's all about like every single one of these countries you can click on and uh, you'll get certain statistics for them. For example, India, which is where I'm gonna start my playthrough here. If I zoom in on India, we can see that India has a preference, right? These are certain colors and what they want, right? And we can sort of take a look at different types of things, like for example, preference. These are the quality preferences for certain areas and you know, different colors represent different quality preferences for people. Uh, let's just kind of go this way really quick. You can kind of scrub with the mouse if you want to by holding down. Uh, you have prestige, you have feature preferences. So these are countries that prefer having lots of features or countries that maybe only need a certain feature. So for example, maybe China is all about business. They don't have a whole lot of gamers. They don't need certain features that would normally be to gamers like really heavy graphics cards, things like that. Uh, you have performance needs and you have ease of use. And for the majority, it's going to be a lot of ease of use needs all over the place. But actually, the last time I played this, India had a really high ease of use need. And now it doesn't. So uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe I might try to start someplace else. If I click on China, for example, I get this little buy icon right here. If I click this, it tells me how much, how many logistics points it will take to expand here, and also what the cost is to come in here. This is like buying a license to do business in that country, basically, and you have to do this to every country. Uh, I do not have enough logistics points to go to China, so I can't do it. I do have enough money, but it's very expensive. You want to start in a small country if possible, so I'm going to try and start in, let's say, Iran. Iran requires two logistics points. Good, I have two. It also requires 1.5 million, so that's pretty cheap. We can try to start in Iran, or might be better off starting, uh, I, I can't start in the United States, for example, because it's really expensive. We take four logistics points, which, okay, it's only double, but look at the startup cost. It's like four times what we have in our budget. Like, so we don't even, we don't even have enough to even begin to think about starting there, right? So anyway, we've got this here. I'm gonna just go ahead and start in India anyway because I like starting in India. I think it's nice. So it costs 2.3 million to start here and it takes two logistics points. I think the dark colors, the, th the thing I don't like about this, and again, this is very early, but the thing I don't like about it is I don't know what the colors actually mean. Is, is it lighter is better or darker is better? I don't know. We can use the tool tips at the top here. Uh, actually, hey, maybe this tool tip right here will tell me. Or maybe it won't. That one doesn't do anything. Okay. See, like I said, it's really early. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start in India anyway. Because I want to get going on this. So I buy the license. It deducts the money. And it also deducts the LP. LP's gone. So we have a population. And this is the population in my market area. I'm only able to produce and sell in India right now. So this is the population of people I'm looking at. Okay. So this is the population that's important to me. No one else in the world matters except India right now. Okay. Could have done Bangladesh, but I didn't do it. It's fine. I don't know if it's dark or light is better, but we're going to find out. So in India, if I click on India again, we could get to this little house bu bubble right here. And it says, would you like to establish an industrial site here? So the first thing I did is I bought the rights to sell there. But now it's like, where do you want to set up your actual HQ, your actual base? Because I can buy multiple countries and then choose to set up my base in one of them but sell to both, right? I can do that. And I do plan on doing that as soon as I have enough LP. Uh, so I can set up this, it costs 10,000 upfront and it costs a thousand a month to maintain. So yes, I do. Okay, here is our industrial site. Pretty, blank, pretty plain right now. You could think of this like the campus for our, our computer empire, our future empire, right? All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and get each one of these buildings to level one. So I'm gonna take office, and that's going to end up going right over here. It kind of has predetermined locations for these. I think in the future, I would really be excited if I was able to sort of control where different structures are. But you'll, if, you, if we play this long enough, you'll see why they're placed in certain places. Because some of these structures get really big. And they take up a lot of space. And so the game has already fabricated, essentially, a plot for each one of these structures. So that when they're fully upgraded, it looks really nice in here. So anyway, I'm going to get laboratory... Factory, office, marketing, etc. They don't cost a whole lot for level zero. Uh, sorry, for level one. They don't cost that much, so I'm gonna grab those, okay? 
So we can speed up time up here. There's not currently, from what I can tell, any keyboard shortcuts for these. But um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up time here. And we'll go to a full view, and you can kind of see it building these buildings, right? So each one of these places has their own plot, and each one of them has a certain purpose that's very important to the, your overall objective. Just remember, this is a this is a city. Uh, this is a uh, building upgrade has completed. Okay, cool. Now remember, this is a business tycoon type thing, right? We're not necessarily worried about designing computers as much as we are looking to sell them, right? We want to be business people in this game. Uh, so I'm gonna pause it again because you kind of need to pause it a lot from this because you need to plan things out and having a day go by while you're just like planning things out is not a pretty good thing. I am gonna spend a little extra money on two f on two things. I'm gonna spend a little extra money on my laboratory because I want to rush some research. Now going to the next levels, it gets way more expensive. Upkeep cost is a thousand at this level, but it gets five times more expensive to upkeep at the next level. So you really gotta know what you're doing before you invest that money because that money is gone once you hit this button. I'm gonna grab another level of for the uh, laboratory. Then I'm also gonna do another level for the factory because I need to be able to produce things. So again, it, five times increase in upgrade costs or Your upkeep costs. Your research queue is empty. Now, it just notified me that my research queue is empty. I have a research facility, but there's nothing to research. So we're gonna come down to the bottom here and it says research. So there's a whole bunch of things we have to research. This is 1974. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on in computers. I mean, there is, at least there's about to be, but for the most part, computers are huge boxes that don't really do a whole lot except crunch a few numbers. Uh, and they're super expensive and they're super huge and very few people have them, right? So as we go along in the game, more and more technologies are gonna unfold for us and it should kind of follow a similar timeline as you know history did. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna say new and I'm gonna look for new research projects. These are all the ones that are available for me to research right now. First thing I'm gonna grab is keyboard because I want keyboard inputs. You can see what this research does in these little areas here. So this is gonna add nothing to our performance because keyboards don't really help with performance. It does add a little bit to prestige and that's like notoriety in terms of like a sign of power and greatness, right? Is what it says. Um, so like, ooh, rich and famous, I want this because it's prestigious, right? Well, my, key my computer has a keyboard, that kind of thing. It does add a little bit to that. It adds 10 to features. It adds two to ease of use, which is a very important thing for me because I'm gonna focus on ease of use right away. Uh, production costs adds a little bit to production costs. Obviously, we have to pay to produce a keyboard, um, but it doesn't really add anything to the quality of our of our computer. Despite it does, despite it adding things to prestige, right? Anyway, that's what I want to do first. I'm going to click Add. That adds that to my research queue. I'm going to go ahead and just let this play for a bit, so you can see the research moves. Now I have 1.1 research points because of my structures, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add really quickly right here, recreation. This gives uh, basically levels of factory de departments. So my factory right now is level one. This determines how much stuff I can actually build, right? So the bigger my factory is, the more stuff I can produce, right? You can see my PP now is 10,000 because of this factory. I'm waiting for this upgrade to happen. So I'm gonna like go ahead and speed it up. Your building upgrade has completed. All right, so Your building upgrade has completed. Both of my upgrades completed. Now, with a factory built, I now have forty-five thousand PP instead of ten thousand. Yeah, huge upgrade. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio though. Five times more expensive to maintain, but it's not five times more production. Keep that in mind. Also, my research went up. Again, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. At least not even close. This is five times more expensive to maintain, but it only doubles my research speed. So again, you have to be mindful of where your upgrades are coming from. Now, if I want to make my factory any bigger than it is now, I need a high, I need a bigger recreation area. I'm not going to do that because it would be silly. My monthly budget is terrible. Right now, my monthly budget is losing. Uh, this is the upkeep of my site. This is the upkeep, right? 12,000, right? Doesn't seem that bad until it gets super crazy and I get everything else. I have a marketing department, which we can do for marketing projects so for our, for our, uh, our computers and stuff that we're building. Uh, we have laboratory. We, we talked about all this stuff. Logistics. Logistics is pretty important uh, because it's going to allow me to gather LP. This is where my logistics points, if you will. This is where I earn these so that I can expand to more countries and broaden my market share 
and make more money. Essentially, I want to get to as many countries as possible. Right now, I want to get to a second country. I have two LP. Let's go to the world map really quick. And I think... I'm going to focus on ease of use really quick here. This The map doesn't really work very well. Um, I wish it would be a, a, an actual drag. But instead, it, it kind of like... It's sort of like... Um, I don't know how to describe it. I can hold my mouse down here and don't move it. Nothing happens. But if I move slightly this direction, we start moving. And that's the opposite direction of where I'm going. So it's like if I take my mouse and move it to the left, it goes to the right. And if I move it to the right, it goes to the left. Which makes sense from the point of like dragging it, almost like I'm moving it. Which is, you know, like a touch screen. But the fact that it doesn't actually go with where my mouse is going, like it, I'm not actually moving it like a touch screen. I would like to be able to move this like a touch screen for sure. Because this is really weird. Anyway, so let's go to ease of use uh, right here. I can see which countries to focus on for ease of use. I have two LP. Um, I don't, again, I don't know if dark green is bigger or is a bigger need than light green. I want to say it's not. Like, I want to say that. Um, yeah, like this one is light green. And this one is lighter or darker green. Okay, so it, lo it looks to me like the darker ones are focusing on ease of use. So we, we started in a good country here because India. Yes. Okay, good. We started in a good country here. So I'm going to take Bangladesh. It has a pretty small LP requirement. Let me double check really quick and make sure that Myanmar isn't. Or Myanmar is. Yeah, this is also a one. So what I could do is buy a license for Bangladesh. And then also get one for Nepal, which is really close by. And then I can also expand to Myanmar later. But I'm going to get this little area because they really like ease of use stuff. And that's where I want to start selling things right away. Okay, that's good. Let's go to my sites menu and I can click on India where I have a factory. So here's all my stuff. It's ready to go. But it's not building anything right now. We need to actually make computers. And this is where, huh, this is where the meat and potatoes of this comes in. I mean, granted, the business part of it and expanding and finding prices, that stuff is important for business, but the product you're selling is the big ticket, right? Let's go to hardware. So right now the list is blank. There is no, there's nothing for hardware. I'm going to start building hardware components that I want to add to a computer because let me back out of this really quick. We'll go to computers and you'll see that there's nothing in computers. If we want to add a new computer, we can. There are four types of computers, but at the beginning, you only can do a home computer because we don't know, we don't know how to do laptops and things, right? So home computer, here's the components for a home computer. We have peripherals and accessories. But we have basic components that are like the primary components, right? Your CPU, memory, um, power supply, motherboard, and the operating system. You can add a display if you want, which will add prestige. Um, you can add like storage, for example, which is probably a very good idea. You can also add things for inputs, uh, which I haven't figured out exactly what that is. Because uh, a keyboard is not considered an input. It's considered an accessory. I thought it would be an input, but it's not. Also, GPU, video card, you know that stuff. So, uh, And all this stuff adds to certain layers. We're focusing on ease of use is what I want to focus on. So the, the key to this, to be successful in this game, at least at the beginning, is to be very good at one thing, not kind of good at all things. You want to specialize. You want to target your, target your target market, right? Develop something for your target market and be the best you can be at that one thing because people are going to buy what they really want and need. So that's what you're going to focus on. So... I'm gonna come back out to hardware. My first computer, I'm gonna focus on hardware. Let me close these windows, because sometimes they don't really fully close all the way. Hardware, new. You can choose CPU, motherboards, all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna start with a CPU. So this is our prototype CPU. You can name it here, and I'm just gonna call this one the HT Chip One, let's say. Uh, let's maybe make it 100, because why not? So this is the HT Chip 100. I can just probably just call it the HT100. But then I'm not going to know. Let's do C100 because then I know it's a computer chip, right? All right. So HT C100 sounds great. So what is this? Well, right now it doesn't have any of the features that are desired in a, in a processing chip. But we're going to add some. I'm going to start by adding passive cooling because this is a really big one that my competitors probably aren't adding very much. You notice how the performance, already my performance is 100% exceeding uh, the current industry standard, right? 
So I'm already, boom, I'm already leaning that industry because I'm adding passive cooling. It does add upfront costs, it, as well as adding more to my manufacturing price, okay? You can also go for the 4040 CPU. Again, adds a lot of cost, okay? But it also dramatically jumps performance. Well, actually, a little bit jumps performance. The core performance is, is now up from here, right? This gives me, I don't exactly know what extra from others is, and I don't think it tells me, because this little button here doesn't work. But what I wanna say is that this is, I'm getting additional performance on this because of something else, and I don't know what it is. I think it's the passive cooling. I guess the passive cooling gives it additional performance. So anyway, this is gonna be very, very powerful. But the thing is, I'm only looking for ease of use. I'm not looking for power in this thing, okay? I'm only looking for ease of use, so there's no point in me doing a ton of costs for things. So for now, I'm gonna stick with my standard CPU, 4040 CPU. And I can adjust the turbo here. So if I push this up just a little bit, make it just a little bit faster than my competitors, might be able to get something cool here. Now my cost for this is 137,000. Really? Maybe I misunderstood what these are because I was under the impression that this 4040 CPU, it says compared to the industry standard, it's, huh. Well, that's a huge upfront cost. Uh, I'm gonna maybe make, make this a little cheaper. We'll add these two things, but I'm gonna leave this off and see what that does. So 7% on the core. We can obviously bump this up all the way to 15 now since the price is so low. And we'll keep these two things on, but we'll leave the 4040 off. I'm not sure what to think of that. Anyway, we'll keep it, we'll go ahead and create that. So that's the HTC 100, okay? New piece of hardware, we wanna do our motherboards now. Uh, now, the motherboard is gonna have our DIN connectors, passive cooling, I guess, it's probably fine. We can add all of these features, actually, if we want to. We can bump these all the way up to quality, but you know, it's like, we're still not meeting expectations as, like, as far as I can tell. It says, compared to the industry standard, my features are pretty shit, which makes no sense since I'm already collecting all of them. But again, I think more of these things are going to be explained in the future as the game develops because it's, again, pretty early access right now. So for now, I'm going to add passive cooling, prom, maybe a DIN connector. It's pretty expensive. Let's not do that. Because uh, I don't want to like raise my costs huge. I want to make really cheap computers that are really easy to use for now. So let's go with uh, higher on the features is probably good. And we want to go really nice on the quality. We want to be really easy to use, and we don't want people to have to like worry about like computers breaking and stuff. So uh, is it worth adding this? It actually reduces our costs to add that. That's kind of interesting. All right. So that's our motherboard. I'm just gonna leave it as a mobile one because it doesn't matter. So new, again, you have to you have to make a whole bunch of these things. And as the years go on, the technology advances and you have to choose which, where do you want to focus, right? It's really complicated like that. Like it is in the real world. Uh, so here I'm gonna add the dip memory, which is, God, that's expensive. Uh, I'm just gonna go with passive cooling for now and VLSI, leave it as memory one. We're gonna bump the speed up to about 30%. We actually don't really need to because we're already like way up here. So we'll just leave it the way it is. Create that, that's our that's our memory. Add new again, we're gonna go for a power supply and yeah, a power adapter. I think, no, not an adapter. We wanna do uh, an AC-DC converter and then we wanna add passive cooling to it. Let's also kind of Raise the capacity a bit here. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I want to handle the power supply, to be honest. Alkaline batteries, maybe? I'm not sure what's going on with that, because it like dis things disappear. Anyway, I'm gonna add both of these things, and we're gonna put the capacity up to like here. It's still showing me like negative 92%, no matter what I do here. So I'm not sure how to make that one any better, but all right. Uh, new, let's go with, did I do memory already? Pretty sure I did. Yeah, memory, I did memory already. Okay, so let's do storage. Winchester technology, that's fine. Little big disks, big tape, 
whatever film. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. It's, it's before my time. Performance up here, and we'll call this good. Actually, quality standards are pretty high. We can take this down if we want to. But even that doesn't actually reduce it, so I don't know. We can we can leave it like... It doesn't seem to make a difference other than cost, so we'll just keep the cost low. About like that. Performance-wise, it is making a difference. It is moving things around with that. So let's at least get it to be about 5% over the standard. Call it good. Okay, add one more thing. We're gonna add a display. And pretty simple, they're just the little lights because again, this is 1974. We don't have LCD displays. But I can add more blinky lights that show different types of things. And I can maybe make them a bit, um, bit higher quality components or make them look nicer or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll call that good, that's fine. Blinky lights, fine. New operating system. This is where my ease of use really shines. That's going all the way up. That's going all the way up. Opcode system. Now, despite doing that, we are adding more ease of use, but despite doing that, we're not actually like getting anything in this. Like, it's kind of weird how this is not going above 100%, but it is what it is. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna call this. What's my name of my operating system? Let's call it, um, um, Orange. <laughs> Orange OS. How's that sound? It's, you know, because Apple, never mind. Create. Okay, I've made a whole bunch of components, right? That's all my hardware that I have listed in my arsenal. So, finally, we're gonna make a computer. Jesus, it takes forever, I know. New home computer. Let's start adding our components. Memory. I want, actually, before we do this, we need to get our research done because my first computer, I want it to have a keyboard. So let's look at research. Keyboard's kind of getting close. 20, 50, 20 out of 55. Let's speed up time again. This is gonna cost me a little bit of money, but I think it's worth it because once I get the research done, this computer will sell a lot more. So we're almost done. And actually, let's slow this down really quick. We're gonna add something else. What else adds ease of use? A command line system, perfect. Let's add this in. Uh, you have researched a new our technology. command line interface, if you will. Hard disk drive, like that, add that in. DRAM, of course. Uh, this is a two 4040s integrated together. It's so like a dual core chip, basically. Um, so, mm, I think maybe we'll go with built-in speakers or a BIOS. We can do BIOS and then built-in speakers. Okay. We have a product, we have a research queue, and it's just going to kind of run through our queue as we go through time, which is good. But I have my keyboard now. So, let's go to computers. We're going to go to new computer, home computer. Now, I thought that keyboards would be an input but uh, it's actually not an input, it's in accessories. So this computer is gonna come with a keyboard. And another accessory that's available usually is a printer. Not gonna worry about a printer right now. So, memory. Just start adding some of our stuff in. Now, if you click on this side over here, it opens up the memory and you can see the stats on it. You can't change any of them, but you can see them, which is kind of interesting. It's a little bit weird. I don't know why they did it that way, but it's fine. And if you back out, you might mess up your system too. So uh, memory right here, let's add to computer. That adds the memory. We don't have a we don't have an icon because I didn't select, like um, if I look at the processor, which is right here, the, C the C100, right? If I click this, if I would have selected the 4040 thing, then I would have gotten an icon. But because I didn't select it, I don't have an icon yet. I'm assuming that's an alpha thing. So, you know, give it, give it some time, it's fine. Let's select the processor and add to computer. So there we go. So the memory, CPU, that's up. Our performance rating is 10 right now. And based on just these three things, it recommends that I sell this computer for 118 bucks. Let's keep going. Power supply, add that to the computer. Storage, we wanna add that to the computer. And motherboard, we're gonna put that in right here. Okay, we have display. We want the blinky blinky lights. And our operating system is Orange OS. Uh, we could probably name this Orange OS 1. Of course, I can't rename it. So we'll just leave it as Orange OS and uh, we'll make the next version Orange OS 2. That sounds great. Add to computer. So based on all of this stuff that's in here, we're getting this kind of score, right? A 4.0 on the ease of use, 25 on the quality, 11 on performance. We're trying to focus and aim at people for ease of use. That's what we wanted to do. This is uh, pretty high, I think. 
but I can't, I have no way of telling that right now. I have no way of telling whether this is a good rating, um, whether these are proportionate, right? Like, what's the scale? Is it 20, is it like 100 out of 100? Is that what this is? Because that sounds really uneasy to use. Uh, I don't know. As time goes on, I'm sure the ease of use thing will go way up because it'll become easier for the common person to use a computer. Right now, in 1974, computers are pretty specialized, so they're not that easy to use anyway. Let's call this one, um, uh, let's just call this the Hot Tips Computer. I don't know, I'm pretty un or unoriginal. We'll call this the Hot Tips Computer, or maybe we'll go, um, um, Mark 1. This will be like the 00, the 01, let's say. I don't know, whatever. So, we have this, a very unoriginal name. Uh, we have the, actually, you know what? Because it's Orange OS, I'm actually gonna call this the Slice. I'm gonna call this the, the Slice 1 or something. Orange Slice, anyway. Manufacturing price is 718. Based on this manufacturing price, it recommends that we price our computer at 1252. We can evaluate what we wanna sell it for, but I'm gonna go ahead and save this design right now. That's gonna log it into my list of computers. I can come back to this design anytime. Then let's create a prototype. Your new computer model went into the testing phase. I need to speed up time in order for this to actually happen, so time has to run. Uh, once we test it and polish it up a little bit, it'll be looking really good. And I'm gonna try and sell my computer for 1400. So a little bit higher than the recommended price because I think this is a nice premium product. And I think after our nice little bits of prototyping and polishments, uh, I think people are gonna be willing to pay just a little bit more than this recommended price. So I'm gonna try and sell it to people who really want that extra bit because I have a keyboard and the other competition does not. So mine's a little easier to use than everyone else's. Your new computer model is polished. Okay, it's polished, good. Let's go ahead and hit market to this. This will bring my computer to the market and I can, with this, it says with this button I can skip the prototype and testing phase, um, but I already did that so it's already gonna be polished and stuff. You can keep one product only for five years on the market. So after five years, we're no longer putting this computer on the market. So I'll hit market this and this will start selling. So let me just kind of start going through time really quick until we start selling. Okay, I've already sold eight, pretty good. I'm gonna sell more obviously, but I just started the time and then stopped it again because I wanna to go to marketing. So right now with marketing at level one, we only have billboard ads. If I go to marketing level two, we can start doing things like video games and stuff, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm gonna go for ease of use as my market, not performance. I would like to advertise to both, but I can only advertise this ad to one at a time. That's just the way it is. And of course I wanna do it to India, uh, the text is really blurry here. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, the only thing I can think of is he's using images for these instead of actual text input because this is rendered pretty nicely and this is not, but it is what it is. I'm gonna call this uh, Slice One India. Oh, how about IND Ease of Use? I don't know. It's just a name so that you can identify what this advertisement is. And then this will tell you what my effect of this ad is on this industry. So right now, it just says 1.0%. So if I go ahead and start, we'll see what my product does in this particular country and see whether or not my ad is successful later. So let's go back to uh, here. We're gonna speed up time a little bit. I'm actually gonna take and maybe make, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Hang on, we gotta, we gotta give it a second. So right now, if I look at computers, and I look at this one. I've sold 120, 128. Okay, so I'm not really selling all that well. Might have something to do with the price. Let's see if we can make a nice sweet spot for the price here and bring this down to, let's say, uh, it won't let me do it, hang on. Maybe I'm going too fast on the time. Let's bring this down in price to let's say 1340. Put a little discount on it because maybe our price is a little bit high. Okay. Try trying to sell it for just a little bit more, a little bit less money. See if anyone else maybe bites on it if we sell it for a little less. It doesn't look like we're selling that well. We need to make money in order to continue to research and to continue to stay afloat. Part of the reason why we might be losing money overall is our base costs a lot, right? I upgraded some facilities and maybe I shouldn't have done that yet, but 
Another thing could be that our computer is just a little bit too pricey. Maybe it is just a little bit too high. So let's try to go just a little bit lower. Maybe we'll try the recommended price, see if that matters. It does mean we're gonna sell, we're gonna make less money per unit, but if we can sell enough units, if we can sell more units, then maybe it's worth it. Another thing to consider is we can keep the price exactly the way it is, but lower our costs. So if I take a look really quick at my factory, I have a budget right here. And right now my output PP is here. Maybe I don't need that. So if I bring my budget for this down a little bit, like say 80%, well now with an 80% budget, we're not losing as much. I could probably go a little bit further back on my laboratory as well. Let me just dial this back a tad to maybe 80%. And we'll see if we start making money now. And you see the number, it's finally going up, which means we're finally starting to make money. So I lowered my cost just a little bit in the areas where I didn't really need to spend all that much um, so that we could make some money with this hardware. So let's take a look at this computer really quick. We're not selling as many as I would like to, honestly. And it might have something to do with us not advertising in other regions where you we could be. A new technology. So maybe we'll start another billboard ad. Oh, I can only do one at a time? Oh, that sucks. This doesn't seem to be doing anything here. What if I advertise for performance instead? I don't think this market really cares about performance as much, but maybe it does. I don't know. I never played this game before. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, let's go back to, actually, let's check out statistics really quick here. Click for a report, so a sales report. Uh, doesn't, okay, we only have one product, so that's not really gonna sh tell me much. Here's global sales, and this is us. We have a very sliver of the market share right now. Probably want to, I, I really thought I was going for ease of use, but it doesn't look like the people that I'm marketing to really care as much about that right now. It's kind of surprising. Because ease of use would be like more acceptance. We get more people into computers and then we have, you know, people brand recognition. It's kind of what Apple did. They got, they made it easy for people and then people associated their products with being easy to use, and then they kind of started to get that brand loyalty. Uh, and then despite being behind in all the specs, um, they still sold a lot, and that was kind of their thing. Of course, they did have that little mm, period where they Microsoft had to bail them out, but you know, I'm just saying, it, it's, it's their philosophy, and it kind of worked for them. It doesn't necessarily work for everybody, though, I guess. Top countries by global sales. Uh, you see, now the thing is, maybe our country's poor. I didn't check that. That might have been a thing to check. What's the income here? See, India is in poverty. So, like, they can't really, they can't really buy computers. India is in poverty. So when you're, when you're selecting your country, uh, you probably want to check into that and see whether or not um, your countries can even support it. Looks to me like a... Uh, Nepal and Bangladesh are actually poor. My, I should have bought into Myanmar because that's average. Yeah, I should have bought into Myanmar instead. I can't do it now because I don't have enough LP. So maybe we could raise our LP a little bit. We do have an income right now. Since we have an income, let's click on this, go back to the base. Uh, we can go to logistics and we can raise this up a little bit here. Oh, we need office level two to do that. Okay, so I need to raise my office. Uh, that was an autosave. So I need to raise my office up. If I do that, I'm gonna start dropping into the red. But if I can get my computers into a better market, I'm already in the red. It's already dropping. Let's go. We gotta get our computers. Well, I don't wanna rush into getting a computer into another market. Maybe instead we just develop a different market. We just develop a different computer. I feel like when I was testing this out earlier, the reason why I started in India is when I was testing the game out earlier, I started in India. And I thought I had a pretty decent grasp on what they wanted, but that's the thing. This game has an, a changing world every time you load it up, and so you're not really sure what it is. But, are we losing money right now? Are we, are we uh, 430, 418, yeah, we're losing money, okay. How do I sell to Nepal? Can I sell to Nepal? If I change this to Nepal, I wonder how long it takes for that to actually start kicking in. The Australia is poor. Everybody's poor, like everybody's poor. Except for 
But like even the United States, right? That was kind of a weird shift. Even the United States is poor. But Canada's rich. We can only sell to Canada, man. Logistics price is four LP. Hmm. Maybe we can get our computers into Canada. That might work if we can somehow get our computers into Canada. I have no idea. Let's find out. Let's go to India. We're going to upgrade our office because that's what's required. We're also going to need to upgrade that our logistics after that. So let's go. Let's get our stuff upgraded. It's going to be expensive. We're going to start losing even more money. But if we can do this quick enough, maybe it'll be worth it. Your building upgrade has completed. Okay, so we're going to get our logistics center upgraded now too. And then we'll see about getting, if that gives us enough LP. I don't think it does. I think it's only going to give us two more. I hope it's more. Your building upgrade oh, has completed. that gave us four. Okay, stop. All right, let's go back to the world map. Can we buy into, into Canada? Uh, it costs... Ooh, it costs more. Oh, the money. Yeah, it costs money. All right, well, we still have four LP, so maybe we can get ourselves into another region. Uh, India, a different color. Dominancy. Market share. What color am I? I'm blue. Some A competitor owns my market. No wonder my computer's shit. <laughs> no wonder I can't sell my, my computers. My computers aren't really popular anywhere. <laughs> All right. China takes three LP. Is this poor, 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 rich? What's that? What? You're a rich country? It doesn't cost me anything. No, that can't be right. It's, it's totally right. It's, yeah. That's really weird. It's a rich country. It costs nothing to get in there. So yeah, we'll take it, I guess. Uh, what about neighboring countries around it? Iraq is rich. Takes one LP, doesn't cost that much to get in. Okay, cool. All right, let's make a new computer here. And this time I wanna make a really powerful PC. I wanna make something that just blows performance out of the water with people, because that's probably what we want. So it's the business people that are using this. Let's call this the H uh, the C110, so we'll kind of like, this is the step up from the 100, right? We're gonna activate all of these different things, including the 4040 CPU. Maybe that's the reason we don't have that CPU component. Uh, then we're gonna go to this one. Now we can take this existing unit and we can copy it. And this will create an exact copy of this as the settings we have, but then I can add something to it. So we'll add this to it. Let's increase the speed a little bit. Like we're gonna make a really powerful system here. Like we're gonna, Tear the socks off our competition. Um, I also want to get a new motherboard. So we can make a copy of that and then make sure we get that connector because that's what they want. It doesn't matter what I do, I can't get these up. Like I could jack these all the way up and it's only going to make such a marginal difference. Maybe there's just not a whole lot you can do to the motherboard world. I don't know. Let's create this one. I didn't change the name. Another thing you can't do is once you make the component, you can't change the name. It's just the thing that it doesn't allow you to do. So if I click this right now, it doesn't let me change the name. Like that is the name of this component. So again, he'll probably hopefully be adding his features like that and, and fixing things up a little bit. I don't think our operating system or anything can really be changed. Memory is something that I've already made. So that's the thing. Storage, uh, we actually did research. So I'm wondering if we can do, yes, we can do more storage now. So this storage drive, we want this to actually be a hard disk drive, which not a whole lot of people are doing right now. So it's probably gonna be okay to just come in with like bare bones here. We don't wanna to spend too much on it. So there's that. Storage 001, didn't change the name again. Uh, what about a new operating system? We could do command line. Businesses love me. This is Orange OS. We can call this um, Orange. Uh, no, it's not orange. This one is uh, grapes. <laughs> this is grape OS. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to avoid calling it Apple. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter what we do here. It's not really going to matter. Ease of use does go up quite a bit here, but if we're targeting something else, then 
I don't know. It, it's kind of marginal gains for huge cost increases. So let's just keep it the way it is. About like that. All right, cool, great, great OS. So we've added these things. Let's go ahead and make a new computer now. New home computer. It's not a business, it's a home computer, which is a thing. What did I click on? Clicked on CPU, right? Yeah. But the CPU we want is the 110, which is where? Did I not save it? There it is, right here, this one. Add this to the computer. Then we want memory. Add that to the computer. Uh, we want storage. We're going to use our new hard drives, which is the one with the icon next to it. There we go. And then we have the operating system, which will be the Grape OS. Perfect. Display. We'll keep the same uh, blinky light display, because why not? And let's add a keyboard and a printer, too. Why not? Power supply. I think we actually should make a new power supply. Um, Probably a good idea since our computer is much more powerful now. Where is it? How about this motherboard? Can we put this pop this motherboard in? I want the power supply. Did we not have a power supply on our computer before? No way. I don't think we had one. That might be the reason why our computer isn't selling. Uh, let's call this um, the slicer. <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> I don't know. The 1,000 watt power supply. We're all the way up on capacity. Passive cooling. AC-DC converter. Sounds great. Big upfront costs. Whatever. Here you go. Add that to the computer. So we've got the motherboard, which actually is the wrong motherboard. I want the other one. This one. So our recommended price is 2,000 bucks. I'm gonna sell it for less than the recommended price because uh, I want to make a killing, right? This is the recommended price is two grand. Our manufacturing is 1,117. I need to make money though, and I need to make it now. So introductory price for new adopters. You get it to be cheaper than everyone else. We're gonna start the bidding at $1,800. Wow, it's such a steal. Let's change the name. Uh, we'll change the name to I don't remember. The HT, um, HT Peel. <laughs> I don't know. Going with fruit here, people. Just go with it. This is the peeler. The peel. Let's create the a prototype. The computer model went into the testing phase. All right, we're testing this out. Now, we do have, like, we're losing a ton of money right now because this is an expensive machine and we're not selling it. We're producing it, but we're not selling it. So we need to sell, sell, sell. I think I need to up my marketing department because I want to make sure I can sell this. So let's upgrade the marketing department. Big costs happening here, man. Hope we can. I hope we can recover. We're losing lots of money right now. Let's get this to market, shall we? Your building upgrade has completed. Not enough manufacturing capacity. Whoa, cool. Hold on. That means look, we've already sold 204 of them. People really like this one. Factory, we need to up our budget here. Up up the budget. Here we go. There we go. Uh, might need to upgrade it to level 3. Let's find out. Oh, we are selling these. These are popular. People like this one. The slice, not so much. The peel is fantastic. That's great. Also, if I can see this correctly, we probably have more marketing. Video games. Uh, Lord of Midnight. Sounds good. This is pretty expensive, though. I think we're gonna buy we're gonna buy this one. I think. Ah, eh, let's buy them both. Why not? We have a really popular system. Let's get the word out. Ooh, actually, kind of going up and down here. Although I think it might have something to do with our monthly expenses or something. I don't know. We could probably get recreation up one more, but I think. That would the only reason to do that is to raise the factory level, and I don't think we need to do that right now because we're making money. Yay! We're actually making money. I wish I could open up a, a budget. Here we go. So we had a bad year last year, uh, but don't worry, don't worry, guys. I'm turning it around. <laughs> we're making great money this year, so I think that's gonna do it. I think this is uh, this is a good place to stop. This is Computer Tycoon. It's by uh, Pergorian, I believe is what his name is. Uh, or at least that's the developer's name on, on Steam. 
And this game is available right now. I'm publishing this video pretty much right as it goes live for sale on Steam, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know. And if you like Computer Tycoon and maybe you want to see more of it and we can continue on uh, and do some more with this game if you want to, leave a comment down below and let me know that as well if you want to. And of course, as always, uh, links in the description take you to everything in the world you would ever need to go to. We are making a killing this year. We're already up to 12, 12 million, already up to 12 million. We're making like mad, mad bank right now. Look at this, peel, selling lots of them. That's gonna do it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.